Well, that was a major stupidity. <laughs> so now I have to hit the video. Fuck. Yeah, I hit the button for no good reason. <sighs> well, I mean, there's a good reason. I mean, the camera's a mess. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's decomposed. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's got a wire. And uh, I got confused. To what we see, I'm trying to explain what we see. Um, whereas I start from the data and I work up towards the theories based on the data. Right, and nobody else does anything different. We all have to rely on having experiences. I have to experience something to know it in, in a sense, and so I have to read about it or I have to, in some other way, glean information. No one's arguing any other way. You have to acquire knowledge of something. The point is, is the knowledge doesn't just stay as stupid little pieces of knowledge. No, they're combined into understanding and conclusions. And some of the conclusions are rock solid about the performance of a car engine or what things are capable of doing. You know, whether if I see a rabbit out in the yard, whether I should believe the rabbit has superpowers and he'll fly to Pluto and back with, you know, uh, kryptonite carrots. I know that's not going to happen. Um, you see things kind of backwards. You're going to think, uh, most of you are going to think that I'm, I'm siding against intellectualism. But what I'm really saying is that... <laughs> You're not even siding because I don't even think you understand the concept. You're obviously just totally stuck in the maze and you have no will <laughs> or power through knowledge to understand the game is gaming you. You're just a byproduct of the game gaming you, and the game has no merit. The game isn't doing anything. It's like throwing spears at the Olympics. It's a stupid competition. People shouldn't compete at being the best at doing something stupid. We don't need people who can throw spears anymore. You know, good soldiers aren't spear throwers. There's absolutely no utility to this sport of spear throwing. It's a waste of time. And your intellectual life is also driven by feelings. Feelings of curiosity, a feeling I call Eureka. Which oh, is gee, <laughs> he invented Eureka. <laughs> I said, what an amazing, I call it Eureka. I mean, I mean just, you know, what, what, what can you say? Uh, yes, uh, I, I don't know who you're talking to, but I haven't heard anybody making videos denying the existence of sensations like uh, anxiety or curiosity or fear or you could go down the list of all the different kinds of emotional sensations we're capable of manifesting. Who's denying their existence? What people like me are doing is denying that they have any intelligent, okay, utility. That they're usually just elements that are usually going to bigot your understanding, prejudice your understanding, rather than enlighten you. They're garbage in, usually. I mean, necessary, but garbage. I mean, the necessary function is the good guy, bad guy, being able to tell the difference between black hat and white hat. But beyond that, conditioned responses that tell you, I need to screw that girl, or some other kind of impulse, those things aren't um, knowledgeable. They aren't going to enhance your um, function. They're just going to enhance your potential to make a mess. It's the feeling of the spike of sudden comprehension. And there's many, many feelings, hopefully all healthily interacting. And you guys want to deny... No, so, so this word, healthily interacting. So, so this is this little subtle language, right? But, yes, yeah, see, the, the healthy mind is the accepting mind. The glib fucking uh, asshole who, who just commits his molestations, who commits his murders, okay, without feeling any uh, remorse or angst or worry or concern. Yes, be a good little fucking murderer.
Go ahead, eat your little cow burgers with a smile on your face and say, you're healthy. No, you're not healthy. You're a sick, psychotic, stupid fuck. Feelings. You want to deny your feelings as if, I mean, you're obviously all... Right, in. Who's, who are you talking to again? So this, this vague straw man kind of argument. I'm vague into the wind talking to who? Who? Who are you talking to, retard? Who's made these arguments? Oh, that's right, no one emotional as anybody else and uh, it shows uh, more emotional than many of you and, and so in one minute we're unemotional next minute we're too emotional then we're suppressing he'll go into that now our emotions yet we're displaying emotion so we can't be a suppressing emotion if we're displaying the emotion I mean just duplicitous mush and yet maybe someone like Stefan Molyneux um, oh the feels. What I do is, uh, of course, I have to admit I have feelings, but I bury them deep inside. They don't affect me when you do that. When you take your feelings and you shove them deep down inside and then ignore them, then they, that's what we've learned is that then they don't affect you. <laughs> so who's he talking to again? Is he saying that Stefan Malihu buries his feelings or something? I don't know. We're, we don't have a reference to this. We don't have a quote from anybody. What the fuck is this conversation about? Who are you talking to, shithead? They affect you and bake into hate and all kinds of noxious things, Dan. Uh, things that are part of, guess what? <laughs> yes, the natural self-defensive mechanism. The, the idea is, is that those obnoxious feelings are there to protect you from the danger of the bad guys with the black hats now that you've identified them so yeah there are things that are appropriately hated newsflash there and you, you really need to face your feelings even when so again who who's who are you giving this advice to and what feelings do they need to face what would feel their curiosity what what feeling are you saying they, they're missing out on Oh yeah, there won't be any of the details. This vague straw man bullshit. You know, you're taking in sense data. It's as clean as you could get. That's the colors that you're looking at. The colors, the colors, the fluffy clouds look like, you know, smiling watermelons. Um, we know that colors have emotional content for people. That's been proven for decades and decades. Right, and so who made the argument that colors don't have any um, sensual response from a human being? Everybody talks about favorite colors all the time, idiot. <laughs> all the time. Who, who are you talking to? Patronizing fucking straw man fucking making creep? What the fuck is this bullshit? Even colors, sounds. Yeah, yeah, nobody knows about that either, right? I mean, the music industry at one time was the biggest, you know, bigger than movies. Fear every moment, every single one of your thoughts, even when there's good data in it, has an emotional content, and you have to handle it. Those are the handles. Those are the plugs and, and handlebars. Yeah, so he thinks that's the mechanism for steering is to listen to your emotions when I would argue the rational thing to do is to think about your emotional reactions and notice their when they're bigoted and that's all they are just a bigotry just a sensual response not a rational response a sensual response you don't like that color you don't like that smell therefore that thing bad no that's bad logic that you use to move those feelings around and try to do something with them. And you're just... Right, and you just do all this moving of everything around by some sort of magic power of my moving things around will. You don't know, need the idea first, right? So stupid. Denying them. And all I... right, so denying them. So where? Again, who are you talking to? Who's denied the existence of feelings? 
get it. Um, I see also the idea of I go from my theories and work back to how things appear. It's just that I realize that's the mirror image. Right, whatever that means, the mirror image. So he, I work back, I, I go back and I recognize that, okay, yeah, it is evolution. Evolution creates certain uh, mechanisms of compulsion. Some of those compulsions might not have anything to do with the best interest of the other sentient beings on Earth, like treating other mammals as food. <laughs> yeah. Your own cousins. The original is that we work from data and go to the theories. The mirror image is where we work back. And it makes a nice... Um, yeah, whatever that means, right? So, so again, there's, there's no logic to that. It's the same process. You're going, going back, I mean, dissecting and uh, modeling to build a new one or, or modeling to understand is exactly the same thing. And without dissection, without looking back, you're not going to be able to know how it works and you're not going to be able to make a model that's rational. That's how you end up with a religion, is having inadequate data. If you gave people statistical data before religion, you gave them knowledge of lightning and microbes and genetic code and the whole evolutionary tree, would God be a realistic model? Would, would God really be able to overwhelm somebody who already understands evolution? I don't think so. Intellectual loop is very important, but it's also important to know which is the image and which is the reverse image. Well, whatever. You haven't proven the existence of any such reverse image, whatever the fuck that would be. The reverse image made out of the same data what? How do you reverse image something like understanding of gravity, or understanding of electricity, or understanding of psychology? How do you have a reverse image of it? You either have an accurate image or an inaccurate image. Now why don't you explain how reductionism is inaccurate? By denying that you're having feelings, you're really... Right, so who is he talking to again? Who, who made a video saying, um, I deny I have feelings? Who did that? No, that's right, nobody. You're a devaluer of life. And so, again, so the non-existent crime committed in the non-existent room by the non-existent Professor Mustard or whatever. None of these things exist. This is all just shit he made up. And now he's accusing somebody of a crime in a non-existent room with non-existent murder weapons. It could be on accident. It could be on accident. Who, who talks like that but like a four-year-old? I did it on accident! So, so he's doing this philosophy that's way over everybody's head. And then he says something like, it could be on accident. Just saying. Uh, whoops. <laughs> Made a mistake there. C credibility error. I mean, you know, we all make them. So, yeah, go ahead and point out mine. But I'm just saying. Whoops. But you are. And um, then when you go and complain about the way it makes people, men feel that if all men are potential and these things like this. Okay, so I guess he's talking to some feminist who was ragging on him for being something, right? What the hell else he could... What, what is he talking about? All men are rapists. Certainly not talking to me, so I guess he's talking to somebody else. Um, those are feelings you're complaining about. Right? Uh, your idea of what is woo-woo or not, those are feelings, right? <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, Modern Mystic was the first person I heard use woo-woo. You know, I know it's sort of commonish, but... So I don't know, you know... I don't know. Because in a material universe, one thing we know is that all the phenomena we see, they happen. We could be misinterpreting them. You know, if you want to say the sun rising is an illusion, that's fine, but when you explain what it really is, 
it's going to be a thing. It's going to be a phenomenon still. Oh, it's still going to be something. That's right, yes. So what? But, but when you do understand, it does change your perspective. It's it, You recognize the Earth is round, and you get a whole different idea about it spinning. And those are different concepts, and so it changes how you see everything else and you'll see other things that do similar things, similar little tricks uh, and you'll recognize them before you're fooled by them because now you know you can be fooled, that kind of thing. And that's the same thing is true of your feelings and if you, you are in a sense an illusion because all you really are is uh, you know the local phenomena and that's the universe, you're the universe and your location so the universe is the thing feeling. Oh, I mean, you know, so so this is, and this is what, useful as what kind of mush? For This can only be used as psychological warfare. I mean, this isn't any kind of intellectual or intelligent concept. That, you know, the fact that the the things that are, are in the are-averse, or, or the thing that is, is in the is-averse. You know, that the isers are ising in the isiverse. Yeah, that's the way it's going to work. Anything that's a something, yes, it's happening in the something verse. Wow. That's enlightening how. How is that how is that at all informative to any rationally edified, uh, rationally meaningful, rationally useful bit of knowledge? How is that thing even called a bit of knowledge to sit there and say ising is happening in the isiverse so that's already woo woo and you want to deny that and I can see why you want to uh, so that's already you woo woo and you want to deny that deny what that it's woo woo no I don't want to deny that because that's absolutely woo woo I want to deny that that's useful human conversation that's fucking baby talk that's propaganda talk. That's how you sell cars or something. To say, hey, it, if you get this car, you'll be carring in the universe. You know, that's some kind of bullshit some bullshitter uses. Deny it. But, that's the situation. That's what the data shows. Uh, I'm sorry. That's impossible to escape as a truth. That the stuff that's Uni-ing is in the universe. I mean, it's, again, it's just a silly concept. Silly. That it's possible to have a first-person experience. And, and oh, at. yeah, so who denied that it's possible to have a first-person experience? Who's denying that? Just show me the video. Who are you talking to? Who's, who says first-person experiences don't happen? Who's, who's saying that? Who's saying individual brains don't exist and process an individual environment? Having one. So the universe is having that experience, right? So again, the universe is having the experience by having an alligator's brain and a microbe's whatever. Not a brain, but a microbe's uh, uh, chemistry. Uh, so it's doing all of these things because they're all made up, they make up the universe. And somehow, but it's not doing it the way we're doing it. So it's not the universe actually experiencing it in the sense that it's only experiencing it through narrow channels that are individual and have absolutely nothing to do with each other. I mean, an alligator in, you know, the Nile River... Uh, my consciousness has nothing to do with its consciousness. And we have a real problem here in the politics. Well, we're all trying to do our hobbies and enjoy ourselves and figure things out. Um, we have this political situation, which is a question of how can we uh, join our wills in such a way, people that don't exactly agree on everything or most things or even when we have the same goal not how to achieve it how can we 
have a collective will, a complex of wills to get. Well, whatever. Like I said, first we'd have to agree that this will thing has anything to do with it. The point would be is you have a strategy to accomplish a goal, but we don't have a common goal. Uh, your goal is let's just maintain the horror. It's an, it's an okay amount. It's not too much horror. And let's pile on even more people and cram them in worse conditions and in uh, you know, with even less technology. Let's leave them in the Stone Age because we can't afford the greenhouse gases that it's going to get them out of the Stone Age. I mean, totally unrealistic bullshit. So yeah, you don't have anything. You just have, to, you know, there's there's no, what, what common goal do we have? We don't have one of those. Our will doesn't have anything in common in the sense that I have no desire. I don't will to torture a bunch of organisms for the fake accomplishment of satisfying some idiotic notion in your head that's just a notion in your head. It isn't a fact in the universe that somehow human beings need to be on Earth um, constructing um, soap operas for them to, you know, migrate through, creating messes for them to overcome. ...and make that work. Will democracy work? These kinds of questions. And your first answer is, well, first, ignore that there's feelings. That's not going to work. Okay. Again, and who's arguing to, that you ignore their feelings? What you do is you point out how if you're feeling your thoughts, you're doing it wrong. The problem is not feelings. The problem is your feelings. You're scared of your feelings. Um, and as I said in a recent video, it's like if you... Again, it would have been you know nice if you would just put in the video somewhere who the fuck he is talking to would focus on being more just and you would focus on being consistent and you then you i'm talking to more than one person right so if you all did that <clears throat> so he's talking to more than one person who said what and this is somehow rational how man you're really you know you're really stupid if you think this is a logical way to interact with differing opinion. And the system in general will become more just, because injustice is coming from people, right? And this denial... Yeah, well, it really isn't. It's coming from institutions. So you can say that injustice is coming from people, but it's only coming from people because they, you could argue in a democracy, they get to vote on institutions like inheritance or something else, and they keep affirming the unjust policy. But fundamentally, it's the policies that are the real weapon. Well, feelings is just a, a way to avoid talking about your feelings, and it's not healthy. <clears throat> well, whatever this whole mush is. Again, what what is this? How can how can anybody how is, does anybody wish to defend what Piero is doing here? They're doing philosophy in the context of let's talk about our feelings. I mean, how is it relevant whether you're what you're what you're feeling beyond pointing out the obvious that um, watching somebody be tortured is repulsive and repugnant and makes me feel bad, if not horrible and sick. I mean, what, what do I have to explain about my feelings? I don't feel good when I think about pigs in, in horrible conditions, in little tiny cages. I don't feel good seeing the images and run through my head of what I've seen the keepers of those animals do to those animals. I'm supposed to feel good about it? What exactly are you saying? What feeling am I denying besides my rational connection between things that I find frightening and recognizing that they exist in the world and are happening to things that are just as capable of being harmed as I am? How have I done that math incorrectly? And it's doesn't make you more intellectual when you can't handle your emotions you can't complete a thought 
that is well whatever like again emotions have absolutely nothing to do with the conversation about describing the reality now you want to say it's some charming circle of life again i'll argue that no it's a circle of death and harm there's lots of harm and torture before they're dead so it's not like you're just killing them you're slowly murdering them molested by your emotions in order to take your emotions because i'm not saying trust your feelings no i fell in love once and got married and believe me that feeling yeah and whatever and you're totally justified and defended and can basically are saying everybody should do it you don't have, you didn't learn anything from it you learned absolutely nothing about your incompetence your exaggerated uh perception of of competence you learn nothing you, you fucking idiot because you just sit there and suggest to every other imbecile, go ahead and do the same thing. Make the same mistakes I made. I didn't learn anything from them, so you certainly certain. You fucking idiot. Brought with it an automatic interpretation. I didn't feel like I was putting on there, though of course I was, my mind was. But it, it, it led me to expect a different outcome um, than what happened. I'm not saying trust your feelings. I'm saying if you want to succeed, the uh, well, whatever. Yes, you are, because there's no alternative. There's logic, and doing the, doing the real scoring, and accounting for the real circumstances, or there's your bullshit magic feeling theories. So without the magic, without pretending, it'll be okay because I have magic powers. I will overcome the odds. Without that bullshit, there's just the brutal facts, which are, you can't touch this. You can't go near any of it. Because there's no statistical affirmation. There's nothing, there's no facts that make this at all a good game to play. Especially with somebody else's welfare. You fucking sadistic bastards. So you're going to have to admit the... the that you have these untrustworthy feelings, right? And you're going to have to figure out some of them to trust as well. Some Why? I don't, you don't have to trust any of your feelings. Feelings can be completely irrelevant. You'll have them. You can't escape them. An obnoxious smell is an obnoxious smell. But, you know, you could, you could sit there as it could be a dead human, a corpse, and it's producing an obnoxious smell. Now you can say, okay, it's making an obnoxious smell. I can't hold it against it. I can't take it personally. Um, you know, it's not the corpse's fault. I can figure all that out, you know, and say, well, all I can do is try to mitigate against my reaction and say, okay, maybe I can just put some shit under, you know, under my nose and I won't, I won't throw up from the smell. And then I can deal with the corpse in some sort of rational way without just reacting because my senses are bothered. Some of them, fine. Some of them that you could trust. You're going to have to do that. So, I mean, I'm unimpressed. Your, your claim, because would it be nice if I could be above feelings? Because they just are so messy. So, hey, here's an idea. I am. <clears throat> yeah, well, I'm just saying, if, if we could uh, suspend our personal interests, our feelings, uh, I think the argument would be obvious. That, oh, wait a minute, this is just a silly notion in our head. I just want that because I have an ego problem. And, I, you know, you could just dissect it so simply that there is no motivation for this creation. There is no motivation to keep circle of deathing. No point in it. It's a stupid circle. It's a circle jerkle. No, the problem is, you're not actually. The saying you are just shows, it's like, wouldn't it be nice to have a fountain of youth? Oh, well, then I have one. It doesn't work like that. You haven't really freed yourself from your feet. Well, you're the silly person with the wishful thinking, so I don't understand where that came from. But again, we don't know who he's even talking to feelings at all and you're wasting your time even it's counterproductive for you to be figuring out ways to fool yourself as though you could subtract 
the feelings that are in each and every bit of information that you're processing. Uh, and again, those are just blights attached to things. Stupid subjective prejudices that don't edify. True rationality is includes taking that into account. No, true rationality requires you not to take it into account, but to understand how necess how how unproductive it is to uh, clear vision uh, and fair judgment. True rationality, then you could compare things that include emotion. Because if you have an intellect that can't deal with emotion, then you can't deal with even the color. Well, well, again, it's not about not dealing with emotion. It's about the fact that you are claiming that it's somehow emotionally healthy, okay, not to have a rational response to killing nine out of ten lion cubs. You would do it. I would not. They're red, right? Because it all has emotion in there. I mean, figuring out what is less emotional and more emotional and trying to go for the more material and less emotional uh, view of things involves admitting you have those feelings so that you can take them into account. Just didn't know. And again, how do you take anything into account? You just avoid all responsibility for all harms and trespasses committed. You just pretend the sperm did it. I didn't have any, I didn't will anything. I didn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> Coward. I'm like, you're above it. You're, you're fooling yourself, but nobody else, because we know all of us, everybody else, AJW or not, that you're full of feelings. We, we figured that out. You're not fooling anybody. All right, so I guess he's talking to some uh, member of, I don't know. I mean, it obviously couldn't be one of the uh, women haters because they wouldn't be claiming all men are rapists. So I don't know what he's talking to. But anyway, just the worst kind of a mush video. Yeah. Anyway, so I'll see if I can stitch this slop together. And we'll see if this microphone worked in that location. Uh, and whether this camera is, you know, just might need to be used for certain purposes and only those purposes or something, but we'll see. I mean, the focal length isn't right, too. I know that, so. Uh, anyway. I, it was in my hand, and so I used it. Okay, sorry. Test.